Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. As you can see today, we've got a selection of foods out on the go. And although many of you know that I sell food on my website, these are some of the commercially available ones. So well, I'd love to shill and sell you all my foods. Just talk you through why I use some of the ones that I do, what I do like about food, what makes me choose a food, and what I don't like about foods. So, shall we do a bit of a feeding video? We'll start off with Mega Tank. Everyone likes to see a feeding of the big fish in this tank. This is my DIY plywood aquarium. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot. Currently housing an emperor snakehead and a tilapia. Now, big fish, big food. The main deciding factor on what to feed this guy certainly was the previous owner. So this is a rescue fish, the emperor snakehead Gordon, if you will. And this is the combination of the foods that he was feeding. Um, I cannot get the fish to eat these. So these are the sinking carnivore pellets. They just turn their head up at them. But luckily, the tilapia quite likes them. So that's fine. These, I love. But the main thing I love them for is not for their nutritional value or ease of feeding or anything else. Look at the unit of measurement they use. Each pellet contains the same caloric content of 1.8 goldfish. When did we start using goldfish as a unit of measurement? So this whole bag apparently contains the same calorific content as 2,100 live goldfish. Now, I get the idea and I like it. We're trying to steer people away from um, live feeding and I do not agree with live feeding. And these pellets, they are great. Just shy of 50% protein and they're obviously developed with big fish in mind. So they're a big pellet, easy to see fish can smell them, can see them coming down, and they really go for it. As you can see, the snake head is right on it. And for the tilapia specifically, if I'm targeting that, I go for the smaller pellets. We've got the um, Hikari Cichlid Gold, and I use the sinking one as well as the floaty one. The sinking one works better for this fish, um, as well as these sinking carnivore pellets. And, and they will both eat these. I'll chuck some in just now. tilapia takes these a little bit more readily and they seem to be a little bit too small for the snakehead to be too bothered in them. The tilapia likes to play with his food. So he, he regurgitates, gobbles up a load, spits out a load, gobbles them back up again. But when it's the big pellets, when he spits them out, the snakehead nicks them. I also feed um, live and frozen foods such as prawns, earthworms, even some whole bloodworm cubes, things like that as little treats. But mostly that's what these fish are taking and taking quite readily. If we go in size order, Humphrey's next. He's the, the next biggest fish in the fish room. And again, he has a staple diet as well as a treat diet. So his treats are things like prawns, earthworms, um, bloodworms, any other frozen foods that we've got. Cockles is a favourite of his. But his staple diet is a bit of a mix, really. Humphrey gets a mix because when I fed him individual foods, he would go off them after a few days of just giving them the same thing every day, I guess. I might be anthropomorphising here, but I guess he gets a bit bored. So I have a tub like this, which you can buy on aquariumadventures.co.uk. Stop shilling! Stop shilling! Um, which I keep a mix of foods in there. And the main components of those foods are Hikari Cichlid Gold, the floaty ones, Hikari Cichlid Gold, the sinky ones, and Fluval Bug Bites, which I have run out of and I don't have any, so I can't show you the packet. Um, as well as every now and again, I'll mix it up and throw a different type of pellet in there just to see if he keeps them. And he is quite a selective eater, and if he doesn't like it, he will spit it back out and he, he doesn't go back for seconds. Now, Humphrey does have a big appetite. He's a bit like a water puppy. As you can see, he's going, give me my goddamn food, Graham. What are you doing? So if I put my hand anywhere near here, he's ready for it. So feeding videos with Humphrey are a bit fast. You might have seen him eating some earthworms where people were going, was, did you actually give him anything? Because he just destroys it so quickly. So I tend to 
make them come over here so it gives me a chance to drop the food in give the food a chance to kind of spread around the tank a little bit give them something to do that's why I use a mixture of the floating ones and the sinking ones but he's a very loud and messy eater if he was a person I'd be telling him to shut up But Humphrey is a chunky old boy and he is doing great on this mix of foods. By the way, I've started a second channel. It's clips from my live stream. So if you don't want to hang around for two hours every Friday night, go and check the link in the description below and go and see these kind of shorter edited videos of some of the main talking points from the Friday night live stream. See you there. Next on my list of go-to foods is Vibrabites. Um, I just want to point out at this point, none of this is sponsored. These are all foods that I buy with my own money. Um, no companies have sent me any of these or asked me to say anything. This is just the foods that work for me in my fish room. So Vibrabites work really because they are a very slowly sinking imitation bloodworm. And I've never met a fish that doesn't like bloodworm. I've never met an acarus that doesn't wish bloodworms were a bit more nutritious. So here we've got the best of both worlds. I find them really useful for things like my bucktooth tetras here, pea puffers even, although they can be a bit hit and miss. But I use them quite often as a treat more than a staple with the other tanks. So for instance, the rainbow fish over there, they'll get them as a treat, whereas the bucktooth tetras might get them a bit more often. Next we've got the rainbow fish and Corydoras tank. These get a mix of foods again, um, so I quite like or the Corridoras seem to quite like this absolute mini catfish. Uh, I fed it to my stairby Corridoras, I fed it to these Corridoras, and they seem to go quite good for it, as do the rainbow fish. But I also quite heavily feed this tank my own food, the um, soft Artemia, as I do most tanks, because I think it's a great food for most fish. I also quite like feeding this tank the sticky tabs. Again, my own food, but other versions are available if you don't want to buy from me. Um, purely because this is a great tank for seeing the fish flashing up against this, the front window, front window, front plane of glass and you get to check them out so while most of these guys are just awesome fishies you can see there's a couple there's one in here that's a bit wonky, that one in the middle there healthy enough but it would be a cull if this was a breeding project but thankfully it isn't and as you can see the Corydoras love it too to go snuffling around you, snuffling around the undergrowth, sniffing them out. And then we've got my Oscars. So we've got one large-ish, two smallish, and a several in here. Again, I do feed them a mixture of the Hikari Cichlid Golds in here. I also give them a bit of this, which they seem to quite like. So this is the absolute discus, energy-rich formula. My discus do not like this, but the Oscars seem to go quite well for it. I also feed this tank quite. A lot of my soft Artemia food again, because I think it's great and it's my food, so why wouldn't I sell it? Or why wouldn't I serve it, rather? Uh, these guys go wild for it. So everything else kind of gets a mix of my own food, so I won't show you that. If you want to go and buy some of that, that's great, but that's not what this video is about. This is about some of the commercial foods, and what I want from you is to let me know what food you're feeding that I'm not. Because I'm, I'm not averse to checking out new foods, it's something I enjoy. The thought process behind my food selections is will the fish eat it? First and foremost, before I even think about nutritional value or anything like that, especially a new fish, getting a new fish eating, it's all about getting them eating anything. It doesn't really matter if it's not the highest, top, most quality food in the world. And then I start to drill down on, okay, is this stuff any good? How often should I be feeding this stuff? Looking at the protein content, things like that. Something's really high protein. So I've seen some foods that are like 70, 80% protein. That's, I don't think that's good. Um, it's not a balanced diet. And the same with anything else, even if I find a food that a fish really loves, I don't want to be feeding that same thing constantly because I want to give a fish a balanced diet. And I think that's really important. Like the pea puffers, for instance, they'll eat bloodworms all day long. But if I only feed bloodworms to the pea puffers, that's really not a healthy diet for them, so I'm looking for variety. I like lots of natural, pro uh, so I really like the Fluville bug bites, I really like my own bug flakes, anything that's made from insect larva, insect meal, that kind of stuff, quite high up on my um, wish list. But I ha 
I have to say I'm not I haven't studied this I've not looked at the complete picture of nutritional value like I say my go-to thing is will the fish eat it and if it's eating something that's usually better than nothing so if you fancy talking about this more I do a live stream on a Friday night at 9 p.m. UK time you can come there and we can talk about this tell me what your favorite foods are or just let me know down below if you can't handle two hours of this on a Friday night but you don't want to miss out on anything I have started a second channel link down below if you could go and check that out click the subscribe button all that good stuff it's more bite-sized clips of the, the main talking points from the live streams every Friday I hope to keep that up to date so if you are interested go down there see the link in the description and i'll see you on friday or the next video bye